it's Tuesday, June 6th. June 6th. It just, it just, the, the days just keep coming. 2017, I'm Sam Sheffer, and you're watching Technically Speaking, and I'm joined today again. If you watched the last episode, I had Ray Wong on. Uh, Ray, I'm going to be a regular now. Ray's going to be a regular until the end of this episode. So Ray was on uh, last time. We did a WWDC preview. We speculated a boatload. And then WWDC happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was there. You were watching from afar and reporting on it. Yep. And this episode is devoted entirely to recapping WWDC. So, um, like I said, I was there. It was my first WWDC. It was... Crazy. There was a so much stuff. Yeah. Holy crap. There was a lot of announcements. It was like a two hour jam packed keynote. Um, Tim didn't even do that much talking. He had a lot of his underlings do most of the pres uh, presenting. Um, and we saw a lot. We saw hardware, we saw software, uh -huh. um, and we Swish. saw and we saw previews of hardware, which is mm -hmm. kind of uh, not something we're used to seeing, but we're kind of getting used to seeing with the, you know, Apple did it with the Mac Pro, now mm -hmm. they did it with uh, the two uh, sort of new things that they're coming out with. So let's start with hardware. Um, actually, let's start with the poll, because um, that's what I do on the All show. Right. We do the poll first. Did you install iOS 11 beta? I asked on the last show if you're going to install the beta. I haven't personally installed it yet. I tweeted before and people were like, don't do it. People were like, do it. It's buggy. It's not buggy. It works. It doesn't work. Battery life is great. Battery life is sucky. I'm probably going to do it anyway because I really want to be on it and kind of like learn what Apple is updating as they, you know, they, they push out like updates to the beta once every couple of weeks when you're on the beta. So I'm probably going to install it. Um, let me know if you're going to install it. Have you installed it yet, Ray? I have not, but I really want to. Yeah, me too. A lot um, of new stuff. To a check lot, out. a lot. There's a lot to unpack here. So let's dive into, so, so answer the poll. We'll revisit it later mm -hmm. on in the show um, and I'll remind you to keep voting. So. Um, let's talk about hardware first. Um, let's go sort of at least exciting to most exciting. Least exciting. Yeah. Okay. MacBook Air. Oh. MacBook Air. They it now has Kaby Lake, right? Uh, MacBook Air. Did, didn't they say they updated the MacBook Air too? Uh, MacBook or Air no? got like a small megahertz bump. Okay. And which is basically insignificant. Okay. But it lives another day. I thought they put Kaby Lake in it. Starting at nine ninety nine, thin and powerful tech specs. Let's see if they put Kaby Lake in it. I don't think Processor. So. No, they did not. Okay, okay, so it got. Did it get a bump at all? Yeah, small megahertz it. bump. Okay, small that's... megahertz from like 1.8 to like to whatever. So effectively nothing. Yeah, but you know, if you're a student, it's cheap. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Okay, next, the MacBook. MacBook. Regular got MacBook. Seventh gen Intel KB Lake processor. Now it is a real competitor to laptops of that size because before it was slow. Uh huh. And now it is going to be really fast with KB so, Lake. Yeah, it's got M, it starts with M3 processor, Core M3, and yep. then it's got i5 and i7, which basically should put it around like maybe like MacBook Air levels from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking that it's going to be a pretty decent laptop now, but still one single USB port, yep. uh, USB-C port, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, no improvements to battery life or anything like that. But so. it does have a faster processor. And no price drop as we were hoping for. That's right. So, so if, you're, if you do buy this, I'm just on the website right now. If you do buy this, and let's say I want to do 1.3 gigahertz processor, and it's, it's such an expensive laptop. It's such an expensive laptop. You might as well go up to the 13 inch. So, and talking about the 13 and 15 inch, those have KB Lake. Right. Those got, um, what else did they get in terms of spec bumps? Anything else? Like 50% faster storage, SSD storage, and obviously those KB Lake processors. Right. Um, and, uh, but no new, new display. No new display. I mean, they just got refreshed in October. Right. So, right. what else did they get? Um, better graphics. Yep. Um, Thanks to metal and you know all that stuff. And they're going to now support VR. Right. Like For, through and through at these these new MacBook hardware, they say by the end of the year you will be able too? to. I think just 15 inch. Just 15 inch. Um, because this screen graphics. So. Right. Right. So that's kind of crazy. Apple had uh, people from ILM, Industrial Light and Magic. Mm -hmm. They work on um, Lucasfilm and Star Wars. Um, they had those people on stage. They were using a Vive backstage. And Apple basically said, like, we are going head first into AR and VR content. We'll get to the AR stuff. Oh, you know in just what? You know what? At, what? You're mentioning that uh, eGPUs support, yep. official eGPUs support, yep. which I 
am a big fan of. What does that mean for the people that are uh, watching? That is an external graphics card that you can plug in through Thunderbolt 3, I believe. Thunderbolt uh, so 3. that's what they had on, right. on the show so floor. There were like these right. boxes. And then, so basically the MacBooks are powerful enough to run a separate graphics card. Right. Is that what it is? Okay. Right. Um, and then they say by the end of the year you'll be able to... Basically, it, to me, I could be wrong about this, but it seemed like the way that PCs support VR, mm -hmm. the Mac will support VR by the end of the year. That's uh, kind of the... It's good to see Mac finally support uh, VR. Yeah, yeah, it's about time. I mean, the, the Oculus came out like a year or two ago, and now yeah, Apple. Yeah. Apple always waits until the market is kind mm -hmm. of saturated. Uh, in a sense, and then they go out and say, look, we did it too. And but I also is... think, like, you know, the developers were, like, kind of, like, very vocal about that. They were yeah. demanding Apple support VR. Right? And they They're did. And now they are. And they totally did. So we've got the tiny spec bump to the air. We've got the uh, the MacBook update. We've got the MacBook Pro update. MacBook Pro also starts now at twelve ninety nine. MacBook Pro starts so now no at longer. That's with no touch bar, the 13-inch. And what was it before? Do you remember? Fourteen ninety nine. Okay, so you save two hundred bucks, but yeah, but um, fifteen hundred bucks with no touch bar and like you know as an entry level MacBook Pro thirteen inch. I uh, honestly, that was too much. personally, for me, if I were to buy one of these laptops, I would not get the touch bar. I want these physical keys. Mm -hmm. Like the, and I've talked to people. You can like change the function right. keys to stay there, but I like having the uh, the physical button. So, right. all right. So updates across the Mac line. Um, and then the iMacs also iMac. got updated. So those now, so the, the 21 and a half inch iMac now has a 4K display. Yep. Um, let me just continue looking iMac. And then... Um, they Kaby put, Lake they, chips as well. They put new screens in these. Or did they not? They put a new screen, they put a 4K screen in the smaller iMac. I think that was already there. There, there was a model with 4K. Okay. Yeah. And they still have the 5K iMac. Right. Um, but now they have KB Lake, they have faster graphics, 50% yep. um, faster SSDs, up to three terabyte fusion drive, four, four and a half gigahertz. Um, VR support. VR support, yeah, so <clears throat> Red Knight is most brilliant. So yeah, brighter than ever. Yeah, so they have new uh, displays. Now they're 500 nits. I mean, those screens were already pretty dark. Yeah, they are. Like, it's, it's funny how, like, it, literally every year <laughs> Apple's like, we updated the screens, we made it faster and better, and it's like, Literally every single year, they're able to make it faster and brighter and more colors. And, right. But yeah, so there there are updates now. And there's also now um, th uh, USB C with Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt three. Yep. Thunderbolt um, USB C ports. That's and, good to see. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's kind of the iMac line. iMac definitely worth buying um, right now. It's not crazy expensive. Uh, but, iMac Pro. But the iMac Pro oh is. Uh, they previewed an iMac Pro. Yep. We actually kind of knew this was going to happen in Lance's piece when he went right. to Apple and talked about the uh, Mac Pro. He said there was like literally one line where he's like, we'll, we'll see a, uh, a new design or new type of iMac this year. And sure enough, we did. So the iMac Pro is a 5000 starting at starts at $5,000. How many cores uh, does it have? Up to 18, 18 cores. cores. Wow. Um, 18 cores in a Mac, no, that's not a typo, says Apple. 8, 10, or 18 core Xeon processors. It's got like a gajillion teraflops of yeah, like power. It's, it's, uh, it's, they say it's the, the most powerful Mac they've ever built until they put out the Mac Pro, and then that's going to be the most powerful Mac they've right. ever built. But um, how, how powerful is this new iMac Pro compared to like a PC? There, I saw a bunch of tweets. People were like, "Oh, you could spend five thousand dollars and get two yeah. two PCs you of can the buy same like, caliber." Yeah, you can buy a PC you with could, like Titan. What those new Titan? Ten eighty, whatever it is, the the GTX. Whatever the most expensive one is. They like those are. They are pricing this at a premium, obviously, because it's Apple. It's space. Gray? It's also space gray, which is awesome, and they're doing a space gray mouse, keyboard, and trackpad. The whole computer space gray. That's kind of cool. It reminds me of the. Uh, Anniversary Mac, remember the Mac? Anniversary Mac, Macintosh? Maybe. The black one? Uh, the one with the CD-ROM right in the middle and you like pop it down, John oh, Yard designed it. Oh, yes, 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 so yes. It, kind of like a special edition. Yeah, this is definitely feels like a special edition. Yeah. Four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, 44 million pixels, I would imagine it's 5K. 10 just, gigabit inter Ethernet, just so... Just a beast. Just it's, a beast it's an all-around beast. Yeah, it's a 5K display. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's coming out in December, yep. they said. But Mac Pro, it, a new Mac Pro is coming out 2018. 2018. So, so that kind of makes me feel like the Mac Pro isn't coming out maybe until the second half yeah, of I would say 2018. So. And it makes me feel like this is going to come out. People are going to spend... 
five, seven thousand dollars on this thing, and then six months later, it's going to get an update. Right? You're like the people that bought the Touch Bar MacBook are kicking themselves because now it has Kaby Lake, and that will definitely make a difference. To, I mean, to, do you think Apple will update this one for a while? Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope they learned their lesson. Like, I mean, they actually, it, like, you know, this does seem like it's loaded to the max. It's good for like a couple of years. Yeah, right like if you're spending five grand on <laughs> this, you should expect. I mean, I w if I was spending five thousand dollars on a computer, I would expect it to last a decade, literally I'll, ten years. I want to know what the like most spec'd out iMac Pro will cost. Like, how much is a Over spec'd out Mac Pro? Over 10, 10 grand, right? I, I would say K. for the uh, for the iMac Pro, spec'd out is going to be over ten grand. It's yeah. going to be like fifteen to twenty. Let's see. Let's see. Which just just for fun here, Mac Pro. Remember when the Apple Watch edition cost like twenty five thousand or nineteen, <laughs> eighteen thousand dollars for gold? Does anyone still buy those? So let's see. Select this one. So this is four thousand dollars. Let's see. Two point seven gigahertz, sixty four gigs of RAM. One. Add eight hundred dollars for what? So, so this is seven grand, okay. um, maxed out more or less. Two point seven gigahertz, twelve right. core. That one's eighteen core, and that can do. Didn't they say it's? Uh, they're going to do one hundred twenty gigs of RAM. Yeah, that's insane. That's uh, yeah, insane, not... and I think they said more than the two terabytes, four terabytes uh, yeah. of Fusion Drive. Ridiculous. Um, it's it's yeah. It's ridiculous. But it's priced at a ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah. ridiculous price too. Like uh, five thousand. Venmo me cash so that I can buy it when it comes out in December. All right. So the last bit of hardware okay. that Apple announced, um, number six at, at, on the list, was the HomePod. Tell me how you feel about the name. What about iPad? Oh, the iPad. Oh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. There, there are so many things. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Why, let's do what iPad first. Right, well, right. I mean, now you kind of spoiled it, but we'll do iPad first. Let's do iPad. New first. iPad. Ten and a half inches. Ten and a half inches. So they killed the nine point seven version. That one's dead. The nine point seven inch Pro iPad Pro is dead. Nine point seven inch iPad regular is still around. But it's not the iPad Air anymore. It's not. It's the regular. So I mean, so confusing. It is yeah. so confusing. So basically, if you want a Pro, products. you you get a bigger screen. And you get like, there's so now the big thing is the 120 hertz refresh rate on that screen. Right. So I saw it in person. You said it was silky. Screen. It is. It is insane how good it looks. Like turning landscape to portrait, mm -hmm. flicking through all the just um, like moving elements around in the UI. It is so smooth. It, it, it's like. It's like it's turbocharged. Like right. you're watching something in fast forward. It it is crazy to see that display. I know that sounds like a like under. Under like talked about feature, mm -hmm. underrated feature, but like they said it can switch between like 24, 48, that's, and so that's what they, hertz. that's what the Apple employees so, were telling me too. Like depending on um, what you're doing, right. it will dynamically adjust the it's, refresh it's rate. It's kind of like a TV, right? That's right. That's it's right. Like a TV. Well, for me, when I go to friends' houses and they have True Motion or yeah. 120, like, and they're watching like regular TV, and it looks like it's like everything's it like bad. weird. So I, I always turn that off. So. I hope, and I would imagine that Apple resolved this. Like, if you're watching a YouTube video, and it was shot at 24 frames a second, it shouldn't kind of like overcompensate right. to make it look quicker. Right. Um, well, but, for gaming, hopefully it'll switch to 120 hertz. Right. Everything will be buttery smooth. It. And when you're reading, it'll just it'll go back it'll to 24 hertz. Right. And and it uh it scrolls it scrolls so so well. Right. If you're near an Apple store, pretty sure they're out now, right? They're they're shipping everything shipping today, right? Pretty sure the iPads are shipping today. Uh, don't quote me on. I that. think they're shipping next week. You ordered them yesterday. Okay. Yeah. So other new things like A10 Fusion, A10X Fusion chip. Mm -hmm. So more powerful than the iPhone 7. It's it weighs one pound. One pound. Uh, it's pretty the good. The iPhone 7's camera, so 12 megapixels on the back, mm -hmm. and the 7 megapixel selfie camera on the front, and also the 12.9 inch got the same updates. They didn't really mention that. How much is the uh, iPad? Pro 10.5. Let's see. And also, they they still they still do not have uh, 3D touch, no uh, 3D a, touch. A, a haptic touch in their. The, yeah, I think they don't that just it. might be the surface area. That's, you think so? It's more difficult because it would be hard yeah. to vibrate the whole thing. Yeah. Um. So let's see. iPad Pro. At, the iPad doesn't even have a haptic engine. That's right. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. So iPad Pro um starts at starts at six hundred fifty dollars now, right. which is, um and. Yeah. But, well, that's not bad, I think. You know, the previous 9.7 inch iPad Pro was like 5.99. So, I mean, you're getting a Pro. If you if you were to buy an nice. iPad, this is going to be the best iPad you can buy ever. The 9. Point, I would say the 9.7 inch right. iPad Pro 
is like the, and especially with the new 120 hertz refresh rate, it is a beast. Okay. And now they have 20 second, 20 millisecond latency between with the Apple Pencil. Um, and uh, they have now, I guess we can talk about the augmented reality when we talk about iOS 11, but that right. was one of the things they were demoing on the iPad. Anyway. Um, and the 12.9 inch iPad is still gigantic. It is absolutely ginormous and hilariously. They could have the bezels down. It or is, yeah. yeah. I mean, the top and bottom bezels are still uh, kind of big. Um, but the side bezels are, they are thin now. And um, I held it, it looks great. Um, it's light. And Do you again, have an iPad? I don't have an iPad, no. I have no use for an iPad. I'm laptop with I've keys. got an iPad Air 2, still good. I don't think I'm gonna be ditching it anytime soon. Yeah. Just use it for YouTube. It'll get iOS 11. So. Yeah, I, I use it for YouTube and yeah. like browsing the web, like in some email. It's literally, you use it like a tablet should be used. Exactly, right? so You're it's gonna be to good do, for like, years. real work on honestly. it, right? So, all right, now that we've got through the hardware, well, besides the, uh, the, the last thing that I yeah. spoiled before, um, let's, we can talk about the, the HomePod. So, okay. it was rumored for a while, we heard it was going to be like a Siri speaker, but Apple is definitely positioning <laughs> this as a kind of like breakthrough music product, a, mm -hmm. a speaker for your home called the HomePod, comes in black and white, seven inches tall, $349, it's got seven tweeters. I didn't even know tweeter was a word until yesterday. Okay. That's just, I guess that's another word for speaker, or maybe like the, the, the what are the, the pots? I don't know, My uh, I have a record player at home, mm -hmm. and my brother was like explaining to me how it works. I don't know, but the, the uh, it looks like a, it really does resemble the Trash Can Mac Pro. It's a, It looks like a, a giant marshmallow. It does. Um, that you just wanna like, just With like some mesh squish. Yeah, so exterior. we yeah. weren't allowed to touch it. It was on a white table, actually about this size, mm -hmm. and there was the black one and the white one, and we weren't allowed to touch the table, nor were we allowed to touch the unit itself. And it was a non-functioning unit, and I asked right. the Apple employees, I was like, can you just, can I play some music? And they were like, no, you're not allowed to interact right. with it, nothing. Um, it was just kind of to look at. So, I mean, let's just unpack Yeah, this. break break it down for the us. The name, the name, HomePod. Pod, Pod is back, AirPods. HomePod. Was Pod ever dead? iPod. I mean, Pod. Where's Where's the iPod Touch? Yeah, it's dead. It's not getting iOS it's, 11. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, man. It just sounds weird to me. HomePod. HomePod. Well, yeah. what, 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 what do you think they should have called it? I'm kind of disappointed they also used Home, you know? Everyone's yeah. using Home. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Be a little more original. What, like speaker pod? I don't know. We were speculating Siri speaker. I yeah, would, but that's I, weak. I thought that would have been all right. I thought it would have been all right. I don't know. I don't hate HomePod. I really don't hate it that much. I think you'll get used to it as the time okay. comes. Remember, remember when they did uh, like Force Touch, That's like true. that. Yeah. Like they they touch have bar, some Touch bad. Bar. Okay. Yeah. So, three forty nine. I think pricing is a little expensive. You said two fifty. I said two fifty. I said three hundred. You said three hundred. So you win. You're closer. Um, yeah, a little expensive. Obviously, it's not gonna. It's it's. They're going for better sound than the Echo or the Google Right, Home. and Lance got a chance to listen to it. Right. And he said it sounded awesome. And every report I've read said it sounded awesome. So, remember, remember the DVLA Phantom? No, it's not going to touch that. You don't think it's going to touch that? Gonna, that, thing, that thing was just like vibrating. That the, thing is yeah. also three grand, right? Yeah. I imagine having two uh, homes, though, two home pods. You don't think it can compete with the DVLA Phantom? I don't know. I don't know if you uh, if you've been watching uh, our videos for a really long time, Ray. Months and months DVLA, ago, they, Gold they, Phantom or they whatever. They brought in this speaker that we had it in the Unreal. studio and we pushed it to the limit. The entire office heard it. I think we could have shattered this glass. The, the like bass put. was you literally felt the bass in this building. It was absolutely. It was the loudest speaker I've ever heard in my life. Like, and the thing is not like it's I've not obviously heard louder because I've been to concerts, but for what it was, it was pretty damn good. And so Apple's positioning this. As as this is gonna be the best home speaker you can buy, a because of Not Siri. Not ever, but like. I mean, for for like the price and what sure. you get, right? It's three hundred forty nine dollars. You get Siri. It has the spatial awareness that like will kind of dynamically change the way the music comes out of the thing, and uh, and and yeah, it runs Siri, which. Uh, so it basically uh, does. I mean, okay. So here's the thing. It does everything that an Echo does basically. Mm -hmm. So you can say, Hey Siri, play music. Who's the singer of this song? Mm -hmm. It's somewhat contextually where Apple says it boosted the AI for Siri. Um, it also knows things like news and you know trans uh, translations. I'm not sure about translations. News, maps, and like basically all this stuff, calendars and all that stuff. All the stuff that Echo does. It's not going to be as intelligent as the Google Home because it's not quite 
connected to all of your accounts that's and right. all your services. But that's the thing about the HomePod. Apple's banking on privacy. They said that you know it's uh, encrypted. Uh, your your transmissions are your audio is everything's encrypted. Encrypted and it's using a lot of on device processing. Mm -hmm. Everything so that's all the data that's transferred is anonymous. Right. So they don't know like So security is a big thing. Right. And they're also uh, pushing Apple Music on this thing. Like it, it will work best if you use Apple Music, uh -huh. which So here I got a question for you on yeah. that. So hey Siri will work with Apple Music because they're tightly integrated yeah. and all, but Siri will probably not work with other streaming services like Spotify. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't, right? No. And what about like, <laughs> yeah, my phone's going off. <laughs> uh, shut up, Siri. Uh, and what about using the HomePod as a regular Bluetooth speaker? Is that even Right, a thing? I don't know. That's a I great question. I looked on the website earlier today. You didn't see it. a single tr mention right, of Bluetooth. Right, yeah, like you should be able to buy that speaker and just have it as a regular AirPlay device. I think you can AirPlay, okay, but, but not, not a Bluetooth, which huh, honestly, like the Echo. So, but the, I don't think that's a feature they can't add later because the Echo didn't have Bluetooth support at first for like pairing your own devices to it. And then they just and said, then they update it later and add that in. So I think it's. Possible. I would, I would, I would assume that Apple's going to let you do Bluetooth right. connectivity over. That would be insane. Right. I mean, like they. Yeah, we'll see. Though. Okay, we'll, we'll so they're they're see. positioning this thing as a Sonos competitor, um, an Echo competitor, a Google Home competitor. It's they they really are kind of going after this like now home smart speaker device right. thing. Yeah, so, controls all your home kit devices as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, you, will you buy? I'm really interested in buying one. I really, really am interested in buying one. It's a little expensive though. Here's, I, here's my deal. I would have seen two ninety nine. I mean, it's not as... just that I already have an Echo. Um, <laughs> And I live in a small apartment, mm -hmm. a New York City apartment. It's an old apartment. So it's not like I'm going to be able to like crank the bass up you know, too often. Right. So I'm not going to be able to make the most use of it. So somebody's saying, like, oh, man, the Echo's like bass or whatever isn't as full and isn't mm -hmm. as deep. I mean, I think it's all right. You don't want to disturb right. your neighbors. Yeah, I'm going to be all right. I already, mm -hmm. I, I already have, have an it Echo? Like, yeah, I have an Echo. I already have it at like volume 6 max is, I think, volume 10. Mm -hmm. And... Honestly, it does. It fills up my apartment, and I but you you haven't heard the HomePod yet, Ray. I mean, I've heard better sound. <laughs> yeah, of speakers. You heard a DVLA I've heard, Phantom. I've heard better speakers before, mm -hmm. and even like what's that? The Yui uh, Boom or whatever. Yeah, that one's already better than the Echo. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so for someone like you, no. But there are definitely enthusiasts out there. Sure, that if you've will, got a big home or something, go yeah. for it. Yeah, and then you can connect two of them, and it'll do like stereo. dynamic stereo. Yeah, so. Um, insane that Apple again has a new product. You know Apple what? I, has the only a new... thing I'm disappointed is Phil Schiller made so much noise about the display and how important the display right, is. Right, right. Like, I mean, there is like there a, things that the display. There is like a display on the top. It just like kind of just like shows ambient Siri. Yeah. It's like Siri's like Casper the Ghost, just like kind of just like yeah. chilling on the top of the display. Um, but there's no display. It's no like display. it doesn't. Yeah, you can't really do. So I'm gonna be like. Eh, on HomePod. It, it looks all right, but I guess I'll. We check have to it out. see what it sounds like yeah. in real life. Yeah. All right, so now that we've covered all the hardware and we've been streaming for like 20 minutes, it's oh, now crap. time to get okay. into uh, the meat and potatoes okay. of, this, of this episode. Um, so, shout out to Tracy. Um, so, what do you want to talk about first? Let's, let's go in, in order from least to, to, to best. Yeah, let's just, let's just so, fast write. All right, tvOS, all that was updated was Amazon, yeah, well, yawn. Amazon Prime <laughs> Video is coming to the Great. Apple TV. Great. Watch OS, so I can pull this up on my computer. Watch, also. OS, Watch OS 4. 4. Also, pretty pretty yawny. There's a new Watch OS 4 brings more a, intelligence and fitness features to the Apple Watch. There's a new Siri watch face that like shows a bunch of cards yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so this. Great. There's new like watch faces with uh, Toy Story characters. Great. Great. <laughs> okay. And then and then the kaleidoscope. Oh my so god. So the kaleidoscope, yeah, okay. you can take a photo and make like a kaleidoscope visual. That he said it's quote trippy. Um, and then there's the the Toy Story. Uh, At this point, I'm just like very unimpressed with Apple Watch. The, same. The updates every year just feel like point updates. Yeah. New they need, watch they need faces. New, they need new Come hardware. On. Yeah. That's that's basically all it was. This Watch OS 4, it, and they they have the new multitasking. Like sure. it's like the cards. So a little bit of a UI change, but nothing. Again, 
This, the Apple Watch, to me, and maybe to Ray, is a glorified notification device. It's a beeper for your iPhone. It's a beeper. That's, I mean, it's cool. You can, like, talk on it, like your Dick Tracy. Nobody does that. But I did that once, and I got punched. That's not true. Um, <laughs> but I just, uh, yeah, uh, unimpressed with the Apple Watch. I did tweet that these new watch faces might make me start wearing the Apple Watch again. It would be nice to see Woody and Buzz, but, um, yeah, not too impressed. All right. Okay. Uh, Let's get to the meat. Let's okay. get to the meat. The meat. Uh, Mac OS, High Sierra. High Sierra. Another they were, wow. They were he. They were full of wee jokes in this. In this. Uh, yeah. They said baked. They said he said he said <laughs> fully baked. And we went to the highest peaks and we're doing yeah. High Sierra. And literally, in my head, I was like, remember when they named it Penguin or something for like five minutes and people weren't sure it was like two minutes and people weren't sure if it was a joke. I was in the audience and I was just like. This, this is not real. There's no way it's called High Sierra. I thought Sierra. they were punking us. And yeah, they and, and like, they just they yeah. kept going. And they kept it, going. And it's called High Sierra. All right, whatever. So it's called High Sierra. Um, a lot of improvements under really? the hood. A lot? A lot? A lot? Okay, I, I would I say a lot of improvements under the hood. Yeah, Safari, I it, Apple. I mean, when I say a lot, Apple file system, they completely rewrote um, okay. the file system. That I'm excited for. They So I was there, and they were running beta of this software and there was a six gig keynote file he i hit copy and hit paste boom immediately instant right immediately okay. yeah um and usually a, a six gig file to duplicate would take you know six seven seconds and now it's literally less than one um so now they have they they're supporting h265 or hevc which is a new standard for 4k video and hdr um and hdr um, Metal 2, um, virtual reality support, okay. that's pretty huge in, uh, in High Sierra. I'm just reading this, uh, new photo stuff, additional app refinements, so Siri on the Mac stuff, Spotlight, mm -hmm. iCloud, file sharing lets users share any file stored on iCloud Drive. Uh, ooh. See, here's the thing. Oh. I, I mean, look, nice. look at these features. New Safari features, okay, great. Auto video blocking or whatever. Right, they, they have uh, autoplay video blocking and then like the ad, they got rid of like tracking. Right. Okay, that's great. And they also said Safari is now the fastest web browser. Yep. Eighty percent faster than. Like, yeah, whatever. Safari. Mm. <laughs> still, still a little bit. Of I an see you're using Chrome. So. I'm using Chrome. Yeah. Okay. Um, and come on, like mail updates. Oh, I don't even use the mail. Yeah. App. I mean. I mean. Great. I, I like the mail app. It's fine. But like. I I I I feel. If that's the best High Sierra could offer, then like. That's that was a highlight in a two-hour keynote mail an update to mail. Yeah, all right, touche, touche. <laughs> Come on. But the, but to me, um, H.265 support Apple file system, mm -hmm. Metal 2 and VR kind of uh, under the hood significant improvements. Like this operating system just got a lot more capable. So it's um, it's kind of like you know like a snow leopard or a mountain lion updates where it's like. The fundamentals are there, mm -hmm. and then they kind of like give it a little. Update. Yeah, that, hence why it's called High Sierra. Right. Like they didn't think of another name to call it, like another town or city name. They're just putting high in front of the name sure. um, for, I guess, high performance. Um, and beta is out now, I believe, for this. All of these betas are I think out. So. So I don't recommend installing any of them, even though I'm probably going to do it myself. If you got um, a second machine, do it. If you it. have a second machine, sure, but don't install this on your daily driver because um, okay. it's going to be buggy. All right, now. Mac OS updates, great. OK. Um, iOS 11. OK, the big kahuna. Yeah, what, what do we got? You go, go through some of them off the top of your head. Wow, so much, but mostly for iPad, I think. Mostly for iPad, yeah. So iPad gets like. iPad gets a dock. Right. iPad gets a dock like that's a, a, very a, similar to Mac OS. Right, and they and they removed the names of the apps from the dock, mm -hmm. which is really interesting because this dock doesn't right. have names of apps. Right. The dock on the phone does have the names of apps. Right. So, so there's can, a dock that you can kind of just swipe up and reveal from wherever you are on the operating right. system. Convergence of Mac and uh, Mac OS and iOS is happening right before our eyes. So there's the dock. There's, there's a drag and drop between two apps. So, so you, if you're... If someone emailed you a picture and you want to, dr you could drag that photo into messages and send it to a friend. Or if you want to grab a photo from Reddit or Twitter, you just drag and drop. And it supports, supports multiple, uh, like you can stack whatever you want to drag and drop. And then you can also like bring it up into the multitasking tray. So let's say you're full screen on Twitter and then you can drag and pull up the dock and then like, 
basically put it over or open up messages. It is a, a really dynamic way of, of doing file sharing on, on the iPad. And now the multitasking uh, uh, screen has been redesigned. Let me just see. Yeah, so Ray, bring the computer up here. Mm -hmm. So this is now the multitasking screen. So the dock is down here like this. Yes, this is now the, the brand new control center. So now those are the sliders for brightness and volume. It's customizable. Um, and now you you have this like card like UI for multitasking. So when you double click the home button, no more does it do that single what is it what does the iPad look like for multitasking now? I don't even a, know. It's exactly the same as iPhone, but just big ass windows. Okay, so it's like the it cards just didn't make where it's just yeah, it doesn't really iPad. make any sense. This this and and I remember they they uh, had this in a beta a really long time ago where you mm -hmm. saw all the kind of apps like this. Um, I really like the new multitasking UI on iPad. I don't think iPhone has this. Right which is a bummer. Um, uh, customizable uh, control center is huge yep. for me. You can also, in iOS 11, you can screen record. Screen now, record is you big. Can do, you can do screen recording on your iPhone natively. You just go into control center. It is one of the widgets. You just put it in, hit record, and go. No more needing to plug in your iPhone, opening up QuickTime, yep. file new movie recording, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what it'll do for audio. What we'll about, have, like, being creepy, just like, you know. Right, so the, uh, Kerry wrote a report today on this, you know, kind of invading Snapchat a little bit. You can just, you know, start screen recording and record your incoming snaps. But, but honestly, you've been able to do that already. And, and you could do it on iOS. And I just feel like, I don't know, part of me just feels like no one really cares anymore. You know, I feel like it was a big concern back in the day, but now that Snapchat's been around and it's so kind of mainstream and saturated mm -hmm. people, I feel like people just don't care. Probably. You know, and the people that are going to be nefarious are going to be nefarious regardless. Um, and another kind of subtle but important update in iOS, they removed the ability to sign into social accounts from the operating system. No Facebook so and Twitter. No yeah. Facebook and Twitter. So right now you can go into settings and find Twitter and then log into Twitter from within, like inside throughout the operating mm -hmm. system. So then when you download the Twitter app, you just, you just, you're, you're in already. And same thing with Facebook. They removed those features. Why? I don't know. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't know. They're, maybe they're they're kind of fighting the battle against these social networks, even though they are Privacy fully supporting. Privacy concerns, no doubt. I think. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I would say so too. Yeah. But it's it's a very interesting play from them. Um, so augmented reality stuff in iOS 11. They are there's now something called AR Kit. Apple basically fully supports augmented reality. There's a I don't exactly know how it works. So do not make fun of me while I try and explain this. But if you're a developer. You dive into AR Kit and using the camera of the. It's is it only for iPad or is it just iOS 11? They were only demoing the AR stuff with the iPads, just FYI. Um, now you have full integration with augmented reality using the camera, so depth perception. Um, so you can like take the and this is none of this stuff is new, but it's new that, that you know Apple I think has it now. I think it's interesting that it only uses one camera. Yeah, because iPad Pros and iPads don't have. Dual lenses, dual, dual Ooh, cameras. Yeah. So, yeah. Imagine they did VR kit on a phone with yeah, two cameras. Yeah. So it will be very fascinating once the iPhone 8 or whatever it's called. Right. Comes out, right. So. Right. I feel like they're just paving the way for some insane augmented reality features in the new iPhone because those iPhone 8 rumors, the dual lenses, mm -hmm. you know, um, vertically oriented, and now AR kit. So augmented reality. Um, Apple's now, of course, saying we're delivering the biggest AR platform in the world because so many iOS devices out there. I guess that's technically true. Um, so iPad multitasking with iOS 11. There's updates to Siri. It's got a more natural sounding mm -hmm. voice. Um, there's a lot of new camera features in terms of live photos. You can now loop live photos. You can edit live photos. Right. Um, they, they really kind of beefed out. Do you use um, live photos? Never. Exactly. Ever, ever, ever. But now I might start using them because you can do the loops. But okay. um, the long exposure Ooh. thing was cool. That was really cool. What? Apple Pay. Oh, this is person, huge. Yeah. Person. This, this RIP might, Venmo. This might be my, my favorite feature, and it's, it's kind of a silly one to be a favorite, <laughs> but I use Venmo all, like, yep. at least once or twice a to month. To pay your um, friends or whatever. To pay for friends, yeah. And once or, twi once or twice a month is like, enough where the app stays on my phone and like, right. I need to have it installed you know, kind of thing. There are definitely apps on my phone that I haven't opened in six months, but Venmo is definitely something that I open once every couple of weeks. Um, and now I will never have to open it again. Now you can just pay your friends. The only in it's, it's 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 again what Apple's doing, 
saying, you use iOS, you get all of these wonderful features within our ecosystem. You don't mm. use iOS, you don't get them. That's not to say that if you don't have an iOS device, you can't use Venmo. But if you do have an iOS device, you can use peer-to-peer -peer Apple Pay. And it's easier. And, and it's, it's yeah, safer. you authenticate it right from there. Um, and yeah, kind of kind of like a under, an, uh, I feel like that's an underrated, they definitely talked about it, but to me it seems like that's a, that's a pretty big deal. Okay. Um, do not disturb while driving. The screen goes black. The so screen goes black. I mean, I don't even want to talk about car, <laughs> car accident deaths right. with relating to, uh, you know, smartphone usage, but um, very ha happy to see Apple kind of leading the charge here with this. Um, I, does this only work with CarPlay or no? It says iPhone can detect when you may be driving. So then maybe it'll automatically turn it on. If you turn it on, um, yeah, it does do not disturb. Additional iOS features, uh, control center, yeah. Yep, oh, and center. the new lock screen, uh, which is kind of interesting. Now, when you pull down from the top of the phone, wherever you are on the OS, it locks the screen. You're like back in the lock screen. Mm -hmm. And then you can swipe up for the rest of your notifications. I feel like Apple still has not nailed this, but they're trying. Um, now AirPlay 2. Okay. Um, oh, and redesigned App Store. Yeah, you know, I it, saw it. It looks a little confusing it's, to me. It, I, I think that design is really new and interesting. What's kind of troubling is like the single front and center apps. Like you open up the App Store and boom, today, mm. one single app. It feels like... You know, if it just you, feels like a lot more scrolling. And yeah, if it, it feels like Apple is kind of at the same time, and I tweeted this also yesterday. At the same time, they're hurting developers while helping them. Like, if you get your app featured front and center, you're golden. But if you're a developer trying to get your app featured front and center, it feels like there's a lot yeah. more scrolling. There's not as much information per screen swipe as there was. Right. Um, and then another thing: one-handed keyboard now. I guess. It just like kind of squeezes the keyboard. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be another underrated feature where we're going to use it and be like, how the hell did Apple guess not what? have this before? Samsung had this feature ages ago. Of they course. laughed at them, and then now they're and doing now, it. And now they're doing it, yeah. um, What else? Apple Maps got indoor maps for and malls, for malls and, and, and airports. Then, and lane guidance, too, lane guidance. because I've definitely made that mistake before where you're in the wrong lane, and now what they else? have lane guidance. Apple Music has like a new f sharing with friends or what right. friends are listening to. That's something that Spotify's had forever, where if your friend is listening to something, you can see it. Scrobbling is the word. Mm -hmm. um, Honestly, not a whole lot for iPhone. I think that we'll probably hear more yes, about that they later. They definitely focused very heavily on, I mean, Craig Federighi came back out and was like, iOS 11, iPad, let's go. Like they did the iOS 11 presentation and then he came back and was like, let me show you what it looks like on the iPad. So okay. uh, Ray, I think you're right in that come September, we're going to see the new iPhone and a lot more features uh, on iOS 11. But yeah. I'm going to install the beta, okay. probably, um, and I'll probably show it off on the show on Friday if it's up and running. Don't, no guarantees on that one because right. um, I, might, I might screw myself in doing that. Let's, try, let's take a look at the poll, uh, Michelle. Let's see right. what's going on here. Um, if you're installing iOS 11 beta, wow, wow, wow. I don't know how many votes there I mean, were. There might not be a lot of developers. There, there might not be a lot of developers, and there also might not be not be a lot of votes. But um, that's kind of the way. When I tweeted, I got a lot of responses. People were saying, "Do not do it. It's very buggy." Um, okay. So maybe beta two. Yeah, maybe beta two or the public beta. Because right now it's the developer beta, and then they do the public beta where anyone can sign up. But if you're on the developer beta, I believe you get the automatic updates. Right? They push it to your phone automatically. Right. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's WWDC. Did I? Did we miss anything? There was a. It was a huge. Too much. There was a lot, a Too lot, much. a lot. I think this was a pretty sufficient recap. Let me just check All on right. comments here. I'm gonna let Sam check on the comments. I actually really gotta run, but man, so much at WW, and uh, sorry, I gotta run. Go. But so much and. I can't even process. I'm still processing it. Run, run I'm along, Ray. Processing. Get out of here. Thanks, thanks, Ray. Thanks for hey, joining. Thank you, thank you. Um, I think High Sierra is high on the Home Pod. True. Hey guys, here in South Africa, how do I get the beta download on my iPhone? You have to be a registered developer in order to install the iOS 11 beta. Um, but that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this. 40 minute stream on a WWDC recap. Apple's presentation was 40 minutes. Mine and Ray's conversation, or Apple's presentation was two hours. Mine and Ray's conversation was four minutes. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. But until next time, Sam Sheffer for Mashable here. This was technically speaking WWDC 2017 special, and I'll see you on Friday.